all right, going to do a video dismantling this, this heretical end times doctrine of devils, uh, that salvation has always been the same in every single dispensation. And I want to first point out that this is not an attempt at correcting Ed Fenninger because one, he is lost and he cannot see the truth. And number two, I believe he has a lying spirit inside of him preventing him from seeing the truth. This is instead a refutation of Ed's doctrine of devils, that salvation has always been the same in every single dispensation, and warning brethren about this, her this uh, heretic Ed Fenninger and his damnable heresies, one of them being Trinitarianism too, which will be in a future video. But one of the arguments he uses to explain away verses like James 2 or books like James 2 is saying that, oh, it's justification before men, and you're going to see he's adding to scripture to prove his heretical doctrine, his end times doctrine of devils. And what it comes down to is he's trying to get people thinking in the future that they have eternally, they're eternally secure and they're, they're saved by faith alone. Never mind the fact that the words faith alone are not, are not found in the Bible. He wants them thinking that they're eternally secure and they're saved by faith alone as they go into the time of Jacob's trouble so that they'll take the mark of the beast. So that's what it comes down to. So let's get right into it and refute this lying heretic and dismantle this end times doctrine of devils. Good morning. In this video, I want to briefly look at the issue of the word justification and uh, how the faith works people constantly rested, uh, always trying to make it refer to a theological issue, which is uh, God justifying man because of imputed righteousness. The actual word, if you go to 1828, uh, the first point is the act of justifying is shown to be just or conformable, conformable to law rectitude or propriety, vindication, vindication, defense. In other words, before men. It's showing that the individual has been vindicated. He's shown before men that he truly was keeping uh, 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 just before the law. He was a just man. And we see example of that in 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. That didn't do with the salvation. That has to do that no one could no one could accuse Jesus Christ of breaking the law. He was justified before men, and that's the justification you're seeing in James two. So he says that James two is talking about justification before men. But if you read James chapter two, there's no mention of it. there's no mention of any kind of justification before men. He's adding to scripture, defending a lot. Let me show you what James chapter two actually says. Let me show you that because I'm going to show you that defending a lot. See so if you read James chapter two, uh, the context of faith without works is dead. Uh, I'll read from verse fourteen to twenty six. What doth it profit, my brethren, to say that or though a man say he hath faith and it hath not works, can faith save him? Hmm, interesting. If a brother or sister should be naked, destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needy to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. This is the only mention of faith alone in the Bible. It says, If it hath not works, is dead being alone. Tie this into Revelation 14, 9 to 11, where you have to refuse, refuse, refuse the mark of the beast. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there is a faith plus work system. You have to have faith, but you also have to keep the commandments, as Revelation 14, 12 says. Uh, yea, if a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works, sh uh, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee thy faith by my works. Faith without, where thou works is dead. Verse 19, Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. Oh, but wilt thou know a vain man that faith without works is dead? Look at verse 21. They'll say that Romans 4 proves that Abraham is justified by faith alone. Okay, answer them. Here's, here's how you answer them. Show them James 2.21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest that how, seest thou that, uh, sorry, not the best at reading. Seest thou that faith wrought with his works, and that by works was faith made perfect? Verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, because he was called the friend of God. You see then how by, sorry, you see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was, or likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as a body without the spirit is dead, so as faith without works is dead also. You can see why Ed Fenninger tries to explain this away. But you know what's kind of funny? There's no mention of justification before men. Ed Fenninger had to add the scripture. 
he lied. But let me show you this next video of Ed Fenninger saying that there's eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. And what it comes down to is he's preparing people to take the mark of the beast by making them think that they have eternal, they're eternally secure and are sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's a satanic agenda. But let's get right into this. I finished watching a video by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kim, uh, Dr. Uh, Gene Kim. And this video he was discussing uh, the errors in Han Anderson and Harvin dealing with the mark of the beast. Now, of course, uh, Harvin and, and uh, Anderson are post-trib post -trib guys, and uh, I'm a pre-trib guy. But the real issue comes down to eternal security in the tribulation and the faith work system. The, uh, these guys are coming out with the faith works. They think because you, take, you don't take the mark of work, that's a work. It's a work that shows faith. Just it's a work that shows faith. Really? We're going to see about that. Let's continue. Just like, just like the Hebrews 11, it's a work. It's not a work that's part of your faith. In other words, gives, gives you salvation. It's a work that shows you have faith. That's so refusing the mark is not is not works. Okay. Um, let me show you what the Word of God says about this. Uh, Revelation 14, 9 to 11. And what his argument he always loves to run to is, well, true believers won't take the mark of the beast. Well, I'm going to show you that even that argument doesn't work. Uh, with a simple question. Whenever they say, well, true believers won't take it, ask them the simple question. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 to 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark upon his or receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. We see there, if any man, and whosoever. So people who say, oh, true believers won't take it. Uh, if any man takes it, they get God's wrath. But here's a simple question. Ed Fenninger says the true believers won't be deceived into taking it. Okay, here's a question. Here's how, here's how you nail them to the wall. If a true believer knows it's the mark of the beast and takes it anyway, are they still saved? Answer that one. I asked Fenninger that question one time, and all he could do is say, well, true believers won't take it. That wasn't my question. If a true believer sees, okay, this is the mark of the beast, but I take it anyway, are they still saved? Again, Revelation 14, 9 to 11, if they take it, they get God's wrath. So are they still saved? That's how you nail them with the wall for that question. But look at verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. Faith plus works. Contrary to what this lying heretic Ed Fenninger said. Here's another good one that pinned them to the wall which ties into Revelation 14, 9 to 11. And of course, Fenninger tries to explain this away by saying that, oh, it's physical salvation. Not to mention the fact that, just like James 2, Ed Fenninger has to add to Scripture by saying, oh, it's physical salvation, when there's no mention of physical salvation in these verses. Matthew 24, 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Where is physical salvation mentioned? There's no mention of physical salvation. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. I believe Matthew chapter 10 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, because a lot of what it says it mirrors Matthew 24. Matthew 24, or Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Again, where's physical salvation mentioned? There's no mention of it. Read the whole context. There's no physical salvation mentioned. It's a, um, it's he added to scripture to prove his heretical doctrine. Mark 13, 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You're having to endure to be saved. You know, not taking the mark of the beast, keeping the commandments of God. That's what it means when you have to endure unto the end. So, where is physical salvation mentioned? That's the argument he always uses. And again, get back gets back to the thing. Well, true believers won't take the mark. Okay, what if they do? What if a true believer knows it's the mark and takes it anyway? Are they still saved? And if he says, if he, I imagine if he says, yes, they are still saved, you know, I can't help him. He's lost. But uh, answer that, Fenninger. If a true believer takes the mark of the beast, are they still saved? Okay. So don't be deceived by this heretical lie that salvation has always been the same in every single dispensation. One more verse to kind of nail it to the wall. Because uh, just they'll do anything they can to explain it with the text. James 1.12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, from the, sorry, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Hmm, a crown of life? So again, you can't say, oh, it's physical salvation. Uh, a crown of life. He's receiving a crown of life. What is that? Salvation. A crown of life. So 
don't be deceived by this heretical lie, this doctrine of devils, that salvation's always been the same in every single dispensation. It's wicked. It's getting people prepared to take the mark of the beast, thinking they have eternal security. Uh, eternal security is biblical in this dispensation. Yes, I mean, absolutely, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. God seals you. Uh, first, or 2 Corinthians 1.21-22. Ephesians 1.30, Ephesians 4.30 talks about that. Or Ephesians 1.13, sorry, and Ephesians 4.30. But is this true in the time of Jacob's trouble? Absolutely not. You have to, you can't take the mark of the beast, and you have to keep the commandments of God. And there are so many scriptures that prove, like read Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25 just destroys Ed Feninger's heretical lie. So don't be deceived by this nonsense and this, this satanic doctrine of devils. God bless you. Goodbye.